In today's video, we have all the latest trade talk around the NHL. Today, we focus on teams like the Canucks, the Islanders, the Sabres. Plus, it sounds like a deal might be getting really close between the Senators and the Bruins regarding Linus Allmark. We'll discuss the latest on that scenario. Plus, we have the latest on Marty Natchez, Patrick Laine, several signings, and other updates around the league coming up next. So welcome back to another video here at Top Shelf Hockey. As I mentioned, we have lots to talk about here today. Uh, the rumor mill is running rampant here after we've had a few trades in the last few days. We're getting closer to the Stanley Cup final being over. We're another day closer to the draft. And while, like I said, things are really starting to heat up here with all the speculation. But first, let's talk about things that we know for sure. And that's with some signings we have. We have a number of them here today. Uh, nothing too significant, except for one that's going to probably play a role here uh, with the Penguins. Uh, we have the Chicago Blackhawks today signing Cole Gutman. He gets a one-year deal, uh, league minimum. I believe that's a two-way deal as well. Uh, the Ottawa Senators today, another depth signing for Ottawa. They've been busy with these lately with their restricted free agents. Uh, signed Nicholas Matinpalo. Uh, he gets a one-year, two-way deal, league minimum at the NHL. Um, Matinpalo came over as a European signing as a UFA last year. Uh, mostly played in uh, Belleville in the American Hockey League. It did get a little bit of NHL time. Wasn't sure if he'd stick around, but uh, he's uh, signed for another year. So that's good news for them. That gets uh, some more depth. Uh, Utah have signed another prospect in Patrick Koch. Uh, he gets a one-year, two-way deal. And a pair of signings in Vancouver include Cole McWard and Linus Carlson, both getting one-year, two-way deals, league minimum at the NHL. So the more significant signing today was the Pittsburgh Penguins coming to terms with goalie Alex Nedeljkovic. I know some were saying the door wasn't completely closed and don't be shocked if he returns. Uh, others thought he was gone for sure. Um, but he is back with the Penguins on a two-year contract at $2.5 million. Uh, based on how he played last year, I think that's a really good signing for the Penguins. And I do wonder if they will entertain moving Tristan Jerry. I think it's fair to say that Nedeljkovic was the better goaltender last year. Uh, Jerry, you know, at times has been a goalie that's battled a lot of injuries. There's a pretty hot goalie market out there right now. There's more teams looking than there are goalies available after seeing Darcy Kemper go to L.A. and after seeing Markstrom get moved to the Devils. That's kind of narrowing things down here a little bit, which is why the market's kind of closed a little bit on Ulmark, which we'll talk about here um you know in a little bit but you know i wonder if they might put a goalie like jerry out there to see what might come back i mean even if it wasn't part of their original plan it might be now with this uh sweet ever contract for nadalkovich and if a good return were to emerge i wonder if dubas would pull the trigger we've also got news today that the carolina hurricanes have themselves a new american hockey league coach coach and cam abbott um he is now the head coach of the chicago wolves uh, obviously um, he spent a lot of time coaching in Europe, and the Chicago Wolves, of course, were an independent AHL team. Or most recently, just not long ago, became the uh, affiliate for the Hurricanes, so they now control all of the hiring of the coaching staff and manager and all that stuff there as of just a short time ago. And the rumor mill, all kinds of stuff to talk about. Uh, I want to talk a bit about something that already happened on us, Barkley Gaudreau getting put on waivers and picked up by the San Jose Sharks. We had speculated that perhaps the reason for that was that the Sharks were on his no trade list and therefore he wouldn't approve a trade to San Jose because otherwise they could have just done a trade for future considerations. But if he wasn't going to approve that, then they put him on waivers and the Sharks claimed him that way. If you have a full no move clause, then you can have protection from waivers. If you don't, then this can happen. And it's a smart workaround by the general manager, pretty shrewd move. But apparently, according to Elliot Friedman, Berkeley Gaudreau is pretty pissed at the Rangers. Not so much for what happened, but how it happened. I think he's uh, smart enough to understand the business side of the game. But, you know, in the case of like Ryan McDonough, for example, when Tampa moved him uh, not long after winning the Stanley Cup a few years ago, they went to him and said, you know, we're in a really bad cap crunch. We need some flexibility. We need to move you. Um, so if you're willing to work with us over the next few days, we will find a team that you're more comfortable with and send you there. Or you're going to be put on waivers and we have somebody that's going to pick you up. Um, it's kind of an ultimatum, but you're kind of more willing to work with the team at that point. So clearly, Drury had already made arrangements or had like a set of backdoor deal, if you will, 
for the Sharks to pick up Goudreau uh, as a workaround to the no trade. But the biggest thing is that apparently Goudreau had no communication. There wasn't a conversation, or at least there doesn't appear to have been, um, like there was with Ryan McDonough in Tampa. He only found out a very short time before he was going on waivers. So um, he's just more than anything pissed about how it went down. So obviously he can't do anything about it. He doesn't hold any grudges against the Sharks. He doesn't want to go there, though, obviously. I'll be curious to see if he talks to Mike Greer about getting flipped again or if he'll just end up going there and playing after all. He's played there before. It's not so much about the organization or the city or anything like that. I think it's just he's been in such competitive situations with playoffs and you know battling for Stanley Cups that – you know, he doesn't want to go to a brand new rebuild. Uh, you know, the Sharks have only been rebuilding a short time. They're nowhere near being competitive. And, well, that's just not what he's looking for at this stage of his career. So we'll see. But interesting to find out how that all actually went down. Another note from Elliot Friedman as well regarding the Jacob Markstrom trade to New Jersey. Uh, I know a lot of people were, were underwhelmed with the return for the Flames. But as I mentioned, you know, if Markstrom was giving him a very limited number of teams to talk to. Uh, and I speculated that maybe he only would wait for the Devils. And apparently that part is not true. Apparently Markstrom, he even said so himself when he spoke to the media after the trade, that he actually gave the Flames consent to open up the window a little bit for teams that he would be willing to go to. And the trades... Um, that he was willing to, to consider involved the Devils and believed to also have included the Leafs and the Senators. Uh, now, of course, the Devils give them the best offer. That's where they wanted to go. They were the most aggressive on, on Markstrom, so they get the deal done. But they, he did grant them permission to expand that search a little bit. Um, so that was interesting to see. So the, the Leafs and Sens were 100% in those conversations. Uh, ultimately, it just didn't make a good enough offer to make Calgary want to pull the trigger on that deal. They couldn't have been off a lot if a first round pick next year and Kevin Ball got the job done um, but I honestly I think in the case of Ottawa they had I think Markstrom might have been their second option I'm not really sure where things fit with the Leafs um, they certainly have things to figure out goaltending wise but apparently Markstrom's not going to be their ultimate uh, target here um, now big update on Patrick Line uh, Don Waddell spoke to the media this morning uh, GM of the Columbus Blue Jackets uh, talked about Line and finding him a fresh start and getting him moved uh, he did acknowledge that Patrick Line as of right now has not been released from the player assistance program and that some teams have already reached out he's had some trade conversations around this player so far uh, some interested teams have reached out and kind of had preliminary talks and they've all kind of indicated that based on what he's been through that before before they pull the trigger on a deal, they would like to have a conversation with him and kind of gauge where things are at with him. Probably not as much professionally as it is personally. Um, and he said that obviously, you know, that can't happen yet. Uh, the teams are not allowed to speak to Line A while he's in the program. So he said he should be released any day now. He said it should be just about any time. Uh, so once that happens, then trade talks will pick up. Um, so where he said it could be any time, any day, I would think that there's a decent chance that happens within the next week and that maybe that something can come together for the NHL draft. Um, I know some teams that have been out there have been rumored to be in the mix include Seattle and Montreal. I know there was uh, some talk from Elliot Friedman that uh, Seattle should be a team we pay close of attention to because they're certainly looking to add a, a much bigger scoring punch and line they can score goals. So clearly that's uh, something to look for. And we know the Habs are looking to make another draft day deal where they pull off a, a big trade and get another, you know, fairly young 25 or under player uh, into their uh, organization for, you know, a cheaper cost. Uh, you know, I've seen Arpon Basu uh, and Mark Renau on the SDPN channel talking about this potential as well. And they were speculating about line A to the Hams and thought that maybe if they take the full contract, because they do have that cap flexibility to do so, uh, that perhaps they could do it um, and maybe only swap draft picks. It could allow the Hams to maybe move up on the draft. We know that Waddell also has made comments that he's open to that number four pick being moved he's not completely sold on picking with it and i think a lot of these gms are saying that because they want to be flexible because they just don't know what the offer is going to be at the end of the day a gm could come out and say yeah i'm definitely picking but I'd, you can't really say that unless you know what an offer is so i think that's why we're hearing a lot of gms say like yeah I'm, i'd consider it i'm open to it because uh, it sounds like there's a lot of picks that could be had for the right price and i think that's probably pretty normal it's just the way it's being portrayed here and talked about uh, makes it sound like a lot of these teams are 
you know, more wheeling and dealing here. But at the end of the day, um, you know, a lot of GMs want to listen. They want to see what's out there, but you don't see very many top five picks swap. But they suggested that the uh, value between the pick five and four would be enough uh, that if they take the full contract of lining off their hands, that maybe the Jackets would allow them to swap spots and then the Habs would move to four. The Jackets would move back one spot, but by moving back one spot, they get rid of the full Patrick Lani contract. It's not a half bad offer. I don't know if Columbus would do that. Um, I think they would probably prefer something in return. Um, that's why I think it's probably more likely that maybe a pick might not be involved. I think it could happen around the draft, I have no doubt. Um, or the Habs do have another first rounder. Maybe it's a later pick um, or, you know. Uh, a young defenseman in a second round pick or it could be a completely different package but I think Montreal definitely has the assets to do it and they wouldn't have to necessarily give up a lot but if they could pull it off to move up in the draft and get line a then that would be an absolute steal now a new name that jumps onto the uh, trade bait board today from dailyfaceoff.com and insider Frank Valley is Ross Colton of the Colorado Avalanche again a player that was a victim of the Lightning's cap situation, went to uh, Colorado, signed a big contract, well, not, not a huge contract, but a you know, big raise for him at the time, get some term, get some money, had a good season and put up career highs this past year as well. And it's not that they don't like the player, and they just find himself in a very unique cap situation without really knowing Gabriel Landeskog if he's going to play or uh, without knowing Val Nishushkin's situation, if he's going to be available and what, what's his status. Uh, you know, he's going to go through this extended suspension here, won't be available to the team till like November. But really, if all goes well, he would be able to play then. But, you know, we already heard lots of rumblings about how are they going to feel about bringing him back. So lots of question marks around their cap. They want to bring back Jonathan Drua after a phenomenal year and a bounce back season. But again, they just have a tough time to do all this stuff. And having all that money tied up in Nishushkin and Landeska without knowing for sure if they're going to be there and be on the ice is really challenging. So uh, they may have to make some uh, cuts here to kind of create, create some space that they really don't necessarily want to do. But he's a name that is out there uh, to see what they can um, gauge on the market. I know in Vancouver as well, Ilya Mikheyev is a top priority for Vancouver to move. Uh, they've given permission to Agent Dan Milstein to uh, have trade talks and try to find a new solution, new home for Mikheyev to get moved. Um, another one of Milstein's clients, uh, of course, Nikita Zadorov, would like to stay in Vancouver, and if they can get rid of Mikheyev's contract, maybe they'll bump up on their offer to Zadorov and be able to, to actually keep him. Um, you know, it could be a case of, you know, help us with this one, and then we'll help you with that one type of deal. Um, obviously, they've been trying to move Mikheyev since before the deadline. They haven't had any success, any luck, so I suspect Milstein will have a difficult time. It seems like the Canucks and the Flames always seem to connect on these deals. Uh, I wonder if Calgary would be interested in Mikheyev. Um, could rejoin Kuzmenko over there. I don't know if that's really something they want to look at or not, but at the end of the day, McKay was very much out there, and the agent is now involved trying to get that done. But like I said, that could have a two-pronged approach there, to like a bigger effect with the ability to maybe keep Zdorov if they can figure that out and get that looked after. Uh, the New York Islanders are another team to watch. They are, uh, again, considering multiple things here, but one of the names that's out there that we haven't touched on a little bit is Jean-Gabriel Pajot. It is possible if they can't find a trade that he could be a buyout option, but if they can retain some money and move him along, that would be the preferred way to go so they don't have such a longer-term cap uh, a hit on their books. Um, Pajot is making $5 bucks. Maximum they can retain is 50%. That would knock it down to $2.5 For what he brings you, $2.5 is a lot more reasonable on his um uh, salary cap situation so uh, i don't suspect if they're willing to do that that shouldn't be too hard to do we've seen lula Morello move on some unfavorable contracts a lot in the last number of years and he seems to always find a way and this one is not as bad as some of the other ones they've had to look after so i would suspect that there's a decent chance that pajo uh, find himself moved with retention but uh, again if they're struggling with that don't be shocked if a buyout is something that the New York Islanders do end up considering. Uh, later, some Marty Natchez. It was brought up today by Pierre Lebrun that obviously the asking price remains high. The, the Hurricanes are having lots of dialogue with teams. So we've heard, you know, Philly, Detroit, uh, Columbus. There's a number of other teams in there as well. Uh, I think to some degree, Boston. And 
uh, one of the things that LeBron mentioned is that with the asking price so high, if they take too long to find a trade, he wonders if somebody would consider offer shooting Martin, Martin Natchez. Um, you know, something that you don't see a lot, it seldom works, but a team that's been involved in a bunch of them um, has been the Hurricanes, both on the receiving and the giving end of things, of course, in their battles with the Montreal Canadiens. So um, be curious to see if any of that actually comes together. Natchez is still ranked very high on... Most insiders trade bait boards. They feel that the odds are good. Something will come together and he will move because it sounds like he does not want to sign back in uh, Carolina. They do have arbitration rights there, so that will certainly dictate on when a contract could come together. So it could also put a pressure point to get a trade done if he's not signing back with the Hurricanes too. So we'll see where that goes. In Buffalo, um, Kevin Adams was asked about the uh, rumors about Jeff Skinner being bought out, and he would not de- confirm or deny, which is really not I wouldn't expect him to either. But he did say that everything is on the table. And for that to be the response, I would like to think that there's a really good possibility that Skinner won't be back in Buffalo, that they'll either attempt a trade, and if it's not looking like it's likely, and I suspect it wouldn't be, that a buyout will be something that we see a couple of days after the Stanley Cup's awarded. The first buyout window will be two days after the Cup's awarded. So, of course, we have Game 6 on Friday night, and if the Oilers prevail, then they'll play again on Monday. So it could be as early as um, a Sunday when the buyout window uh, starts, or it could be as late as Wednesday. Uh, so we'll see. But obviously... Uh, the Sabres are a team that's expected to be busy, not only in the Jeff Skinner front. We've heard that the 11th overall pick is available. We've heard that they like uh, they might be shopping Peyton Krebs. If they're trying to find some upgrades to bring in other parts of the team here. Um, so, yeah, we'll see. I've heard the Flyers really like Krebs. I don't know if there's any framework there for a deal between the two clubs, but certainly uh, some names and assets there that I think uh, Kevin Adams has in play trying to make his team better uh and of course uh, the biggest story of the day continues to be ottawa and boston division rivals uh it's been a while since they've had a playoff series back to 2017 when that happened on ottawa's last run to the uh, eastern conference final and of course they haven't been in the playoffs since they did play the bruins and beat them in the playoffs that year um the uh the rivalry has been a little more tame since then where the Sens haven't been in the playoffs but right now they're um, having intense conversations with the bruins around goalie Linus Allmark. We talked yesterday about how he was a target of theirs. Well, the reports today from Dave Pagnona and Elliot Friedman both seem to indicate things have intensified. Um, Pagnota says that he has multiple sources telling him that Allmark has Toronto and Ottawa on his list for uh, the no trade because he has a 14-team no trade list. But uh, Toronto doesn't seem to be all that serious about Allmark. But Ottawa obviously very much is serious and is pushing really hard more than anybody right now. And they have multiple sources saying that he would wave and go to Ottawa. So if he'll wave to go to Ottawa, that tells me that he'd also be likely be open to signing an extension, which would be good because they, if they're going to bring in a player on one year on his contract, they've had this happen a couple of times or it may not work out, they need to get him extend it by at least a couple of years. Um, we'll see. But obviously, there's uh, Friedman said there's definitely a lot of smoke around that situation. Um, lots of conversations on what the return could be. We don't really know, obviously, that uh, the Bruins have a high asking price. Uh, but if you look at the other goalies that have moved, um, you know the, the return piece hasn't been huge. Um, they could offer the Bruins their own first-round pick back because they have that uh, pick 25 in the draft. Maybe they offer that along with a prospect. Maybe they offer um, you know, a defenseman like an Eric Brandstrom. There's some belief that the Bruins might insist on Chickren being involved, but we know the Sens are also talking to the Flyers. We don't really know what that all encompasses, except that the Flyers are trying to get up into the top 10 of the draft. And it sounds like it would, to me, I don't know that we're going to see a Flyers-Senators trade at least not yet. I think, from my understanding of it, after learning a little bit more today, that that trade is contingent on a certain player being available at seven that the Flyers would want and that they would make the trade with Ottawa to move up or the Sens would move back and then gain extra assets for it. Uh, there could be other pieces involved as well, but that, to me, I think is a big factor as to what it could be. At least that's... That's my gut feeling based on everything we've heard about that scenario. I think that's what makes the most sense. But again, 
Hard to say with certainty. Uh, when it comes to the Bruins, though, like I said, a lot, uh, lot of intensity there. Steos is pushing really hard to make that happen. It sounds like Allmark is willing to go. It's just a matter of getting a deal done, uh, which is ultimately up to uh, Chef Steos to get his uh, recipe there ready for the Bruins and cook up that trade. So we'll see what happens. But uh, ultimately, the, the Sens would take a huge leap forward by solidifying their goaltending situation. Belief is Boston would be willing to take Anton Forsberg. They'd still have Corpusalo along with Allmark. They'd either have to find another deal to get rid of Corpusalo or have a lot of money tied up for at least a year until they can consider another move to try to move uh, Corpusalo out of the organization. But we'll see what happens. Um, been a very busy day with rumors. Uh, all kinds of action yesterday. Today's been a little bit less eventful that way. But the, uh, the rumor will certainly heat it up especially around the Sens and Bruins. So let me know your thoughts on everything discussed here today down in the comments. We'll discuss further. If you're new to the channel, make sure you subscribe and stick around. We'll keep you up to date with all the news, rumors, and analysis of all 32 NHL teams. Thank you for watching. I'll catch you next time.